Well, hello and welcome here to the closing day in Lyon. We get ready for the Ban Bahio Classic and we've got a very strong field coming forward. 63 combinations advertised to start here today. Uh, and some of the names as well that we saw yesterday in the Longines FEI jumping World Cup final, like Jordan Coyle, he's coming in the first six. And he, of course, remembered yesterday as taking the biggest win of his career so far when he landed in the winner's circle in that World Cup qualifier at this brand new venue. Andre Ascaraga, he's been a part of the sport for many years. He's coming forward, as well as the lady rider from Spain, Paolo Amalibia, Julieta, the horse that went very well for her in Guadalajara. Patricio Pascal, he's got a great string of horses at the moment. He's coming forward, 18th to go, representing this home nation of Mexico. Juan Angel Hernandez, a great horse for him. Federico Fernandez and Guru, we've seen him jump at Spruce Meadows. We've seen him jump pretty much all over the place, over in Europe as well. Uh, Arturo Navarro, now he jumped very well in the qualifier to get into the World Cup in Guadalajara, then didn't jump the World Cup, brought it in yesterday, had a couple down, so I think he's just dropping it down a level today, but could be very successful. Manuel Alvarez comes forward with Enjoy, coming about the halfway stage through the first round. Jaime Ascaraga, you can see him with Chacol, and uh, that's a rider who's done it all. He's been to the Olympics, he's represented his country in Nations Cups. Patricio Pascual back with another ride. Uh, Salvador Onyati, you can never discount him, can you? He's always quick against the clock, if he can get through to that jump off, of course. Hector Caro, he was in the World Cup yesterday. Uh, not a name that we see out and about too often, but he's got a nice horse in Craig coming forward here in the first round. Gerardo Pascual, another of the three Pascal brothers that will be competing here in the first round. He's got Galvano. Uh, Pablo Valquez and Cascara's in the mix. We've got Rigoberto Aldana and Golden Diamonds WG, a relatively new one on his string. Uh, Pablo Valcales, though, in Cascara, I think that might be one to watch. I saw them jump a couple of weeks ago, and that horse really is on fine form. Carrying on down the list, Beautiful Red, a new horse in the stable of Salvador Iñati, who in fact owns the showground. His house is just behind the trees that you can see on the right of your picture there. Uh, he's done a great job of putting this together, and I know he's excited about that new one on his string. Lorenzo O'Farrell, another very talented lady athlete of uh, Calvira. Gerardo Pascual's got a second ride. Javier Fernandez, Eduardo Sanchez Navarro, and Keres. Very nice horse. Another one that went to Spruce Meadows last summer. Told you it was a strong field. And then as we get towards the end, you know, we get some more of uh, the very best that Mexico has to offer. A few international riders coming forward in this field as well. Now, the course designer here is Anderson Lima, and I have to say, he's done a tremendous job over the last few days. He built his first ever World Cup qualifier yesterday, and what a great job he did with that. We started 21, we only brought two back, but it really was an electric class, and faults all over the place. I know he'll have been celebrating a little bit last night, but certainly putting plenty of thought and effort into this course as well, and I can't wait to see what he has in store. Uh, great to have you with us. If you're watching on the FEI YouTube channel or you're watching on Facebook Live, then you can get involved with the conversation here. It's very interactive, and you can let me know where you're watching from, who you're looking forward to seeing, and if you've got any questions as well, feel free to, to add them into the comments section. Uh, about 63 combinations coming forward in the first round. Any tie for first place, then it is a jump-off format, so they're going to come back over a shortened course and try and go that little bit faster. Uh, later on here this morning or perhaps into the afternoon local time. Temperature today in Celsius is getting up to a high of 28 degrees. The ground here is absolutely fabulous. They've been doing lots of work over the last few months. You're getting this venue ready because they used to hold competitions here about 15 years ago. But since then, it really has just been the private facility of Salvador Agnati. So they've done a Vamos lot of work here. It's looking amazing. Ah, okay. The ground's amazing and we are ready to get ourselves underway. Uh, time allowed here in the first round, that's been set at 81 seconds, and we'll take a look at the course as we get this Pathfinder on track. It is Maria Jose de la Torre who gets us underway with Alexo. This is the horse that Maria took uh, to championships last year. She went to the Central American and Caribbean Games with this horse, and actually jumped quite well there. So she's our first one to go here and the Ban Bahio Classic on the final day here in Lyon. There's 13 numbered obstacles out there, 16 jumping efforts. 
And a reminder, that time allowed 81 seconds. And I think time is going to be part of the test here today. So they start over the airplanes, quite a straightforward officer to get them underway. Everything, you know, quite easy in height, 1 meter 45, coming down over that upright fence number two on the long side. And they sort of bend right in front of hospitality over the red and white oxer at fence number three. Left hand, he brings them down to another oxer and quite a short six stride distance in there. They're gonna just have to sit up as they come down. And that's a really delicate flank on top, very narrow on completely flat cups. Then they roll back into the black and white. A little bit gappy there. And then that bending line brings them down towards the long sheet triple combination. So it's oxer upright and upright. Round the top corner, over the oxer. That's fence number eight now, it's down to a double. One stride through this next double. When I walked, I thought it was just a touch long. So I see a little bit of energy as they come through there. Oh, you can see really working over that Liverpool. It's the oxer at fence number 10. Down to the upright in a normal five stride distance. Right-handed down to the CWD at fence number 12, and then about seven or eight strides down this line, depending on the horse you're riding, and just taking that penultimate fence down today, so we'll finish on four, 79.88, so still well inside that time of light of 81 seconds. Not a bad start there, just taking the one down for Maria and Alexo. They represent the Dominican Republic. Antonio Myra joining us now. He's a man with plenty of experience. He's represented his country at the Olympics. That was uh, a few years ago. He's been to the World Equestrian Games, Pan Am Games as well, of course. And he's got a 10 year old mare in this one by Chaco Blue called Chapella. This is a horse that he had in Guadalajara. Guadalajara, another host of the World Cup events. was in Guadalajara the horse actually jumped very well for him so I think he'll come in with a little bit of confidence today there's a lot of different types of horses over the years a little rub there got away with that though that's that very delicate plank that just came down I don't know if you could actually see there just how narrow the plank was and I think that's going to be a, a fence to look out for as well that slara fence because you've got that rollback turn it's quite gappy as well that'll just draw the horse's eye down a little bit going to be 12 jumping and one time to look 13 today 82 seconds so over that 81 time allowed 12 jumping and one time for Antonio Maurer and Chapella so just a couple gone so far the first one of course finishing on four Miguel Maron next away then with Northern Diamond. This is a nice nine-year-old, this one, by Diamond de Ravel, out of a Calypso mare. Saw him jump a couple of days ago. Put in a good performance. A couple of testing lines out there today, so we'll see what they make of it. See him just signalling to the jury just to pause the countdown. Horse was having a little bit of a, a bathroom stop. And now he gets underway. He had a good campaign last year as well with a horse called EV Projects Edinburgh. Jumping it quite a lot 
North America. And some good placings at Balvanera and the Grand Prix there. There's quite a new one to this string though, just took over the ride towards October, November last year. Antonia Anderson of Sweden had this horse before and we've seen Olivier Philippart ride this as well. Certainly some good horsepower. Sheriff's watching on Facebook Live on the FEI jumping page and says, is there a full list of competitors anywhere? And if you Google search uh, Longines timing and then select the Leon event, you'll be able to see the start list, the results, and also the course plan as well. It's all available on Longines timing. He just has that very frustrating front rail coming down off the Liverpool Oxar on the long side there answering some of the more technical questions out there really well. And again, time allowed coming into play. 83, 5, 3, 4 for jumping, 1 for time. So a total of 5 there. 5 for Nicholas Pizarro, Lincoln Z. That's who we confirm that combination to be. Obviously just electing to move up the order a little bit today. Nicholas Pizarro, a rider who's always friendly, always happy, and the horse that he's just finished on is an eight-year-old by Lord Peasy. We'll find out what's happened to Miguel. Could be that Nicholas just elected to move up. But we know who this man is. It's Jordan Coyle next. A horse called Bold Prince, nice ten-year-old stallion. The one that came from Andy Coker. And of course, he had a great day yesterday because this is the man that rode to victory in the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup here in Lyon. And I'm sure he'll have done some celebrating last night after that incredible victory. It was 21 horse fields, two came back for the jump off, him and Salvador Agnati. Both jumping double clear and Jordan just pipped him at the post. An exciting time for him. I know he thinks a lot of this horse as well. I was speaking to Jordan when he was walking the course and he was saying just how little this horse has done. It actually came from a riding club in Poland. So it hadn't really jumped that much at all when Andy Coker brought it over and then Jordan Coyle took over the ride. And he seems a real fast learner. When you look at the way you can manage the horse's stride, you can shorten it, you can lengthen it. But in a very nice performance. And the horse doesn't really get phased by anything either. You know, for a horse that hasn't done you know, much at this level, and there's plenty to look at here with hospitality and the banners and the crowd and the ambulance that you just passed. But it just keeps that nice rhythm. Jordan doing a great job of just holding them together and helping him when he needs it. Jumps the last very nice round indeed. There's our first clear, 79.96. Jordan Coyle in Bold Prince jump clear, representing Ireland in the Ban Bejio Classic here on the final day of jumping in Lyon. So there's our first clear, and of course we now need that second clear to guarantee us a jump off against the clock. A few more people joining us now on uh, Facebook Live. We've got Laura Hoffman who says bonjour, so I'm assuming you're either in French or some part of Canada that speaks French. Uh, Margaret Wakefield watching in North Carolina in the United States of America. Great to have you with us. Remember, if you are watching, do let us know you're there. If you've got any questions as well, you can fire them in the comments, either on YouTube Live or, of course, on Facebook as well. Uh, this is Filippo Guardino now. Taboo. This is an eight-year-old stallion by Yucato. It's nice to see some, you know, some younger horses coming forward into these meter 45 competitions. 
with great course designers like Anderson building these, you know, it's a great stepping stone for the younger horses that are starting to move up the grades. Ah, just catches that front rar. And if you do come down that distance on a, a longer stride, kind of destined to have that plank because there's just nothing to it. So unforgiving. Yep, he gives a signal to the jury and says he is going to retire. Saving that one for another day. Just a young horse, though. I'll keep an eye on them as things progress over the next few months. Sydney McHugh says, is this the World Cup qualifier? No, Sydney, that was yesterday. It was a great qualifier. You missed it, but you can watch again on FEI TV. That one's not streamed. Uh, on YouTube or Facebook. This is a, a metre 45 competition. It has a lot of the riders, though, that were jumping in the World Cup yesterday, and it's a great chance to see their younger horses or their less experienced horses that are moving up the grades. And again, if you want to follow the start list, if you want to follow the results or have a look at the course plan, it is all available on Longines Timing, Longines Timing website. Just click Equestrian, find the Leon event, and then if you scroll right down to Sunday, you'll see this one is now marked as live and you can follow all the results, get the course plan and have a look at the start list in there as well. But there's about 63 in total coming forwards here in the first round and we've still just got that one clear from Jordan Coyle. When Pablo Torres and Relic Lucia joining us now. He's been a part of the sport here for many years. We've seen him with some nice horses as well. Not just jumping here in Mexico, of course, but all over North America, we've seen over in Europe as well, actually. This is a 12-year-old gelding by Quintero, out of a Rex mare. Working hard down that distance. You we'll have to keep an eye on that line. That's going to be one of the, the lines that, that causes quite a few faults, I think, in this rollback turn as well. You see, he gave it a little tap. He had some really good placings with this in Guadalajara a few weeks ago. That's a, a two-week tournament now, and he was there on the second week. Just had that back bar down. He was there on the second week, um, and he picked up three top ten finishes with this horse. So, you know, it's really becoming quite consistent for him. See him really sitting up through that distance. Just a slightly long stride through there. Close to the Liverpool. A skinny fence to CWD. And then jumps the last. So it's going to be eight jumping, but Ocho, the time allowed. It's 81 seconds time allowed. He comes home in 85, 88. So there's going to be two time faults added on, meaning a total of 10 there for Juan Pablo Torres and Relic Lucia representing Mexico. Jaime Ascaraga next to go, Verdinelli. Such an experienced athlete, been a part of the sport for many, many years. He's been to the World Equestrian Games, three World Cup finals. And now starting to build a really nice string. Got a win with this horse towards the end of last season in November in Lucia. Then came out and picked up a couple of top ten finishes in Guadalajara. A real athletic forward jump, nice and three through the air.
held it together really nicely down that final line. So we'll finish on four today, 78-68 for Jaime Ascaraga and Verdelin representing Mexico. Goes into second place at the moment, so the fastest of the two four fault rounds we've seen so far. Seven combinations gone and Jordan Coyle still sitting as our only clear at this stage. We're pretty much guaranteed a jump off, though, when you look at what's still to come. About 52 partnerships still left to come through that archway today. You can see the warm up just to the right hand side of your screen. Teresa's watching now from Minnesota, says, well, it looks lovely there. It is. It's about 28 degrees Celsius, which I think is kind of high 70s in Fahrenheit. And it's been like this all week. Perfect conditions. Jesus Francisco Hayo comes next with Ruby. Again, representing the home nation, a 13-year-old stallion by Algareto. Looking to be our second clear here in the first round. One of the youngest athletes in the competition today. He's only 18 years of age. Oh, I think an early rail there at fence two. Looks like he just didn't quite get straight enough coming around that corner. the oxer now he's gonna have to work a little bit down this line yeah rode really nice down there he had some good experience last year actually went over to Europe jumped there for a few weeks he's been quite a regular for about the last year on the, the Mexican circuit Mexico really are building up a, a great string at the moment not just of, of horsepower but also of talent as well think back to the Nations Cup in Dublin and just how well the team did there with the clinch gold. Give them five or ten years, I think you know, they really are going to be contenders at Olympic Games and stuff. And front rail and back rail. It's on 12 at the moment. Be a young rider like this and a horse thing that hasn't done too much internationally. Just building up some real good ring experience today. Jumps the last and finishes on 12, jumping one time fault accrued there as well. Maybe a total of 13, 83, 61. So one clear from Jordan Coyle and then two on four, making up the top three at the moment. Andre Ascaraga next, Al Capone. We saw Andre's dad a little bit earlier, Jaime Ascaraga. Now Andre steps forward. They quite often spend the summers together in Spruce Meadows with their string of horses. last year kind of concentrated on a bit of a, a European tour up in Belgium towards the Middle East as well that line's certainly catching a few today a bit of a domino effect as well you know if you come quite long into that oxer it's quite difficult as you land then to shorten up because it looks like you've got a bit of space but that delicate plank comes at you so quickly and looks like he's going to call it a day and retire well, that's not a horse that, that needs that experience in the ring so quite sensibly he doesn't want to just jump it for the sake of it he knew he was out of contention today He 
can see our next one getting his jacket on quite sensibly. He's been warming up without it because you know, it's warm here. There's actually two horse swimming pools. You can, I don't know if you can see one actually. It's just behind that, that white metal fence that you can see towards the back of your picture. There's one there and another one just round the corner. As I arrived today, there was a horse out there having a good swim. Entra a la pista el número 13, el número 12, Luis Alejandro Plasencia, que monta Jack White. This is a man who's won a lot. Young rider as well, actually. Luis Alejandro Plasencia, Jack White, represents Mexico. He jumped well in the World Cup in Guadalajara last season. Jack White's the horse that he took to the Central American and Caribbean Games, part of the team that took gold there. Like most of these riders, he was at Guadalajara with this one just a few weeks ago at a top three finish in a similar competition there. Definitely one to scoop an eye on today. that have just logged on then you are enjoying a meter 45 competition today this is the final day here in leon it's the van bahio classic it's a jump off format so any tie for first place will come back for a jump off against the clock and at the moment we sit on that one clear with about 49 left to come and luis alejandro is doing a, a great job with this one She's over 79.70, so we have that jump off. Very talented rider. Montague Madness is asking on Facebook is he riding in a hackamore? I don't think he was. I think it was just a big fluffy nose band. It kind of made it look like it was a, a thick band across his nose, but it's just a normal ride on. We're on now to Mauricio Paris. Lady Bonata represents Mexico here today. Just getting himself organized. Claudia Ambazul Lima is watching from Brazil today. Great to have you with us, Claudia. And if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, feel free to get involved with the conversation. Just drop a comment comments box. You can see he's just starting in that nice rhythm. A little tap there. Let's come down. Anton Grishin's watching on YouTube Live and says that was impressive. Obviously talking about Luis Alejandro you found and you're right. I mean Luis is a, a great rider. He's so tidy. He's a young talent, but he's sort of been bred into the sport. Oh, you could see that one wiggle through the distance there. As he came into the second part of the triple combination, he kind of shifted left and right, and the rider really had to work to squeeze in that second stride. Super riding there. away with that and kind of bounced up and down in the cups but then fell sits on 12 Touch steady today, so over the time allowed is 12 jumping one time, total of 13 and 82 21. 
Nick Graham's asking, is this a metre 60? It's not, it's a metre 45. Most of the oxers, though, will be about 1 metre 60 wide. Paola Malibia joins us now, represents Spain with a horse called Julieta. Paola has been building up some very nice horses on her string recently. She jumped a horse called VIP yesterday in the World Cup. She's married to a rider called Federico Fernandez, who's been jumping here as well. They make a great team, and the horse that she was riding yesterday is actually one that Federico was riding that just didn't get on with it. So Paola then took over the ride, and she's been having some wonderful results. That's quite a difficult horse, though. She calls that one Diablo in the stable, because you don't know whether it's going to give you a, a nuzzle or it's going to bite you. And she's building up a great relationship with that one, and, and Juliette is really coming on as well. She finished sixth with this. Guadalajara a couple of weeks ago. It's one that she was jumping on the European Tour last year with some good five-star placings and similar competitions in Madrid, La Ball, Cronenberg, Oplebeek. Took it to uh, the Dublin Horse Show as well and jumped the Speed Championship there. So we know if she gets through to the jump off, then you know she is going to be fairly fast. You can see just how quiet she sits through the distances. Just making those very minor adjustments, but then just staying really quiet all the time. Right, Armstrong's now watching in Canada, saying, wishing she was in Mexico. Bet it's a little bit warmer here, Aaron, than it is wherever you are in Canada. on that time allowed of 81 seconds. She's not going to make it. Real shame there. Put in a good performance. Horse jump really well, but 84-31. Just a touch steady, but frustrating. And one time fault there for Paola Amelibia and Julieta. Goes into third place behind those two clears. Jordan Coyle for Ireland clearing through alongside Luis Alejandro Placencia. Forty-six combinations left to come forward. Juan Hernandez Gonzalez is next. Torado Dingshoff Z from Mexico. Michael Aguirre saying on Facebook, great ride, unfortunate time fault. Yeah, Paula just don't know, maybe just used a bit too much room today or just went a bit steady. It's not like her actually to get a time fault. But Really frustrating. If you have had that down, I think you've really got to go just a a stride further down the arena before you make that turn just to allow yourself a couple of strides to get straight especially you know with this horse you can see him just fighting a little bit each time he uses the contact sits on a nice center part of the combination down. and then taking this one horse just running through his hands slightly like with Princess is asking on YouTube Live if this is 140. Close, you're so close. It's 145 all the way around this course. Again, those ox are standing at about 160 wide. A little rack on the back bar. See the horse is coming a little bit onto the forehand around the corner. See the horse settling yes. down towards that last line, but it's going to finish on 16 today. 17.997, 16 total here in round number one. Still sitting on two clears at this stage. Well, if you have just joined me, I'm Adam Cromarty, and we have a lot of talent still to come. Get involved with the conversation on YouTube Live or on Facebook. Great to have you with us. As Gerardo Pascual comes next, Ashange de Larc, representing Mexico, 
or Pascal family really involved with the sport. Both his uh, brothers probably involved in this one today, actually. We'll probably see them a little bit later on. There's a nine year old buying a Bab de Rev out of that Diamant de Semeline there. Tipsy sat and decides to retire. You will find that, I think, today with being there's so many in the field, as soon as you have that rail, you know you're out of contention in terms of prize money. And your horse doesn't need that experience, and he's not perhaps feeling as you would want him to feel. And quite often it's sensible, you know, just to put them back in the stable and save them for another day. It's a long year of jumping with shows every single week, multiple shows every single week now, even on this continent. Manuel Alvarez is next then with a horse called Lupin. It's a 10 year old stallion. It's by a horse called Lan that I've not heard of before. Holly Sharp's joining us from England on YouTube. We've got Olivia watching in New York as well. Rock stars in America, great to have you with us. is watching in the Ukraine. People watching from all over, which is great. Still just on those two clears that we progressed to that jump off against the clock. I think we will see a few more as this class goes on. Remember, that's that difficult line. As they come down there, quite a sharp six stride distance, which you've really got to sit up and make your horse respect that delicate plank on the other side. to work a little bit around the corners just to keep that rhythm, keep the balance. Just push for the long one down there. Finishes on four jumping, time allowed as well. 81 seconds, so it's 82.20, one time fault, total of five for Manuel Alvarez and Lupin. 44 combinations left to come forward here in round number one. Rachel, the vehicle spotter, great YouTube names just joined us. Augustin Igo, next to go with Dorian. Horse's name's definitely easier than his. <laughs> but it's a very nice horse, this one. It's a 10 year old mare by Piccadilly Team. Stallion has bred a couple of nice horses now. about the third person to have that second fence down. It's a difficult tactic. Sometimes if you have an early reel, you can then push on and try and be one of the fastest four faults and get in the money, but with such a lot in the competition today, and then having another reel, he's pretty much out of contention now. So then it comes down to what experience the horse needs and what experience you know the rider wants. If they want to keep going and School the horse round a little bit, get that time in the ring, or do they want to save it for another day? In it?
class. So he's going to finish on 16 jumping, half a second over the time allowed. That'll give him a time fault today. So one time fault, total is 17 for Augustine and Dorian. Maybe Winter's watching on Facebook Live from Israel. Danielle Dempsey-Lewis says, too cold to ride here in Colorado today, so she's dreaming of Mexico instead. Well, it's warm enough here, let me tell you. Patricio Pascal next. It's a great time for him, actually, because he's been producing some young horses up and uh, he's now got a couple, actually, that have been jumping World Cup level. When you think of the horse Babel, the one he jumped yesterday in the World Cup, you know, it won. He bred the horse, first of all, and then it won as a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a seven-year-old. It's a great testament to what a wonderful horseman this guy is. watching on Facebook or even YouTube actually you can hit the share button Let lots of people know that they can enjoy some action here from Leon in Mexico don't forget to share distance and you can see him trying to sit up through the middle he just arrived a little bit forward shifted right and it's going to finish inside the time allowed 80.05 so just two down today finishing on a total of eight Patricio Pascal of Mexico. He's got another one coming a little bit later, a nine-year-old stallion called Dublin, so look out for that one. He'll be here in about 20 minutes with that horse. Marcelo de los Santos and Kertana next, 13-year-old mare. This is a relatively new ride for him, but the horse has done quite a lot over the years. This is a horse that Steve Gerdat had. He took to the Nations Cup finals in Barcelona. Jumped the Nations Cup at Spruce Meadows as well. And Gerardo Pascual took over the ride last season. Now Marcelo's on board. Still owned by the Pascal family, actually. This is a super horse. Steve Gerdat had some real nice finishes with it. Jess is watching in Ireland, great course designer. Uh, we've got Tara King as well watching from Brunswick, Maine. Wendy Lappington's now watching from Fairford in Gloucestershire over in England, where I can assure you it's not as warm as it is here. I left England about four weeks ago now, and it was freezing when I left. I just seem to go to sunny places these days. We did Guadalajara, then we went to Wellington in Florida, and now back here in Lyon, and then off to Hong Kong later today and it's going to be warm there as well so I go back to the UK next week getting ready for a shock but it's 7 today there 7 for Marcelo he finishes on 89-1-0 and coming across that time allowed he's picking up a few time faults there Charlotte Boyle's just joined watching from the Netherlands great to have you with us Charlotte 
Rodent Razor says it's freezing in Washington just now. It's freezing everywhere, it seems, other than here, in the right place. Federico Fernandez, guru. Again, Federico got such a lot of experience. We saw uh, his wife, Paula Malibia, jump earlier. She just finished with a time fault. Federico, a real nice guy. this one. So just help you just get up in the air. Federico's a three-time Olympian to numerous World Equestrian Games, World Cup Finals, Pan Am Games. This is a horse he thinks a lot of. Mexico City, and that was a shame just taking down that front rail. Top 10 finishes in the ball with this horse last year. Fifth in Guadalajara just a couple of weeks ago, and taking another rail down today. Very unlike this horse. Really, really careful. Well, in the end today, it's going to be eight jumping one time. Total of nine there for Federico Fernandez, 82-37. Sinead says, come on, Guru, one of my best friends, bred him in Ireland. He's a great horse, Sinead. I've seen Federico have some wonderful results with this horse. You see just how calm and relaxed he is as well as he wanders out on the buckle, but not like them, and we'll finish on a total of nine. Janice Whistler says, watching Wyoming below zero temperatures there. Stay warm. Karen's watching in Montreal, Quebec in Canada. Bet it's cold there as well. Samuel's joining us in New Zealand. I think you win the prize for being the furthest away, Samuel. Nicholas Pizarro back on track then. We saw him a little bit earlier with the first ride and now back with Pia Contra. It's always interesting to see what horses he has coming through because he's had some good ones over the years. He's had some good results as well. And that sh short distance down there. So easy just the horse to arrive a bit earlier than you need them to. This is a horse that Nicholas has had for a couple of years and just taking the second part of the triple combination down. Had some wins in Lucia with this horse last year and already a couple of top ten finishes with some double clears this year. that one and I'm sure that's going to be one for us to watch because it's an eight-year-old. It's Malik and Fargus. It's a really nice Oldenburg. And it's so relaxed in the ring. You see Nicholas just keeping that nice light seat and the horse just maintaining the nice even contact as he comes down there. I always think these competitions are just as interesting to watch as the World Cup qualifiers for the meter 60 because you're getting a great chance to see you know, some of the stars of the future in terms of horsepower and also some, some riders as well who are starting to move up the grades. Arturo Navarro comes forward next. It's interesting actually at Guadalajara with this uh, horse and rider a couple of weeks ago because he came in to the qualifier for the World Cup so they have to jump a class before they earn the right to jump in the World Cup at these events. And he actually won that and then didn't jump it in the World Cup and then here uh, had a couple down in the qualifier for the World Cup and then jumped it yesterday. Uh, 
flank again. I think if you had to pick one fence to watch, you know, is the, is the main one that's going to fall, it would be that flank. Seen as a 14-year-old mare by Kiran Zhrubin. This is one that Arturo Prada Vallejo had last year. So our city we tops Alexander has ridden in the past. She took it to the European Tour the Middle East as well and had some nice results. He's just a bit off the boil today, isn't he? He's just not listening. She's on 12, jumping in one time, total of 13, 81 for zero for Arturo Navarro, Cristina representing Mexico. Kimball Orbers just joined. She says, good morning from BC, Canada. Ana Sofia Alban and D-Day next to come forwards here in round number one, the 11-year-old KWPN mayor. Still just sitting on two clears at this stage. Jordan Coyle, winner of the World Cup yesterday, he's already through. And Luis Alejandro Placencia from Mexico as well. So that's the two clears we sit on at this stage here in round number one. Today, just 18 years old. There's that plank again. Right from the beginning, when we walked this course, we knew it was going to be one of the ones that we'd certainly catch a few out. You've got to get a nice stride. It's a bit of a domino effect. You've got to get a nice stride into four to then allow yourself to have the space and to be able to set up and make the short six stride distance that comes down there to the plank. a lot with this horse actually last year at San Miguel, Mexico City, La Silla. That talented young rider just starting to gather up the top level experience that she needs to progress. And she's answered some of the technical questions out there really well today. A lot to like. Just having that very Cuatro delicate plank down, finishes on four, jumping also. Time fault again. It's a total of five for Ana Sofia Alban, 81 4 2, finishes on five. So still goes into sixth place at this stage. About 36 left to come in round number one. Ascaraga coming back now with a second ride. We saw him a little bit earlier. Just had one down with the first horse. Now comes back with Chacol. 11-year-old by Shaco Blue. Shaco Blue, one of the most popular stallions here in Mexico. the most popular characteristic of the shackle blue horses is just how clean they are through the front end. Most of the shackle blue horses you see really snap up with those front legs. You can see that with this one. Clear so far. when he jumped his first horse and put a quick reminder of just how much he's done it's the Olympics and the World Equestrian Games, World Cup Finals. He's having to work a little bit at times with this horse, just helping it out to 
to arrive when it should. Just be careful of that 81 time allowed as well. Is he going to make it? Let's have a look. Oh, just over. About three tenths of a second over there. I'm the Ascaraga and Chacol of Mexico. Of course, the clear rounds will jump off for the top places, the lower placings based on faults and time from this round. And he's the faster of the two on one time penalty. So he actually goes into third place at this stage, into third at the moment. En la pista tenemos al número 28 representando a México, Luis Alejandro Plasencia, que monta su segundo Luis caballo. Alejandro Plasencia rejoins us. We saw Luis a little bit earlier jumping clear with that first horse. And now joins us with Chapelito, 10 year old, and another one by Chaco Blue. It's one Chaco Blue horse to another here. You can compare that front leg action with this one and see if it's similar. See if you can spot that characteristic. has got high hopes of making it onto the team for Tokyo for the Olympic Games next year. This is a horse that Nicolas Pizarro rode for a little bit last year, last season. Back in the hands of Luis. And jumping not too badly, just having the odd rail or a time fault here and there. There's that dastardly plank again. that oxer just didn't quite make the back bar. Sits on 12 now. This horse is looking a little bit careless today. I think he might just pull up here. Yeah, he signals and retires. Luis Alejandro Placencia, Chapelito difficult one today. It looks like his horse just kind of wasn't interested, didn't it? I'm sure he'll go back and do some more work backstage and hopefully we'll see them do good things in the future. Uh, right, let's go next then to one Carlos Alvarez. Portis Liz is a 10-year-old mare by Callahan VDL. Still a couple of clears. Jordan Coyle, Luis Alejandro Placencia. So one for Ireland, one for Mexico. And just over 30 left to see here in round number one. to the Oxer. Sets on 12. Just kind of past the out gate. You can just see the warm up in the background there. And a 
rattle on the back bar, it comes down as well. So it's going to be 16 jumping. Time fault on there as well. 82-17, Juan Carlos Alvarez and Porteous Liz representing Mexico. En la pista tenemos al número 30 de México, Andrés Azcárraga, que monta Chamán. Andre Azcárraga, next to go. Where we saw his dad, Jaime Azcárraga, finishing on that time fault a couple of horses ago. Zaman is the name of this horse. Doing a bit of math, so the horses that have gone so far uh, and the clears that we've got, I can tell you it's about an 8% success rate so far. But for this division here, for the horses that are jumping a meter 45, this is kind of like their Grand Prix. This is their classic here. So in terms of prize money, this will be the biggest money they'll jump for this week, and there's got to be quite a few tests out there. picking up some good results but it's the first time we've seen him actually jump in 2019 we saw him do well towards the end of last year this is that distance oh wiggle wiggle got out nicely first time out of 2019 this week just drifting right down there and that almost helped him actually a little bit get nice and straight for the triple combination real gymnastic question you could see him working hard between the second and third element for time let's have a look 80.04 and four jumping faults takes him uh, into seventh place into seventh at the moment remember there's at least 12 cash prizes on offer in any fei competition there'll be a bit more in this one because of the number of starters works uh, on a percentage Fast for a fault round might just pick up some money. We'll find out as things progress. This is Cornish Dream next. Archura Parada Vallejo. Quite an upright head carriage this horse. You can see when he uses his hand, or sort of brings its head up. And that might not be helpful down here. Let's see. Comes in at the angle. Yeah, but jumps it nicely, gets the job done. Sometimes in show jumping, it doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as it's effective. All you've got to do is leave them up. victory in Guadalajara a couple of weeks ago. He's got another horse on the circuit called Vitok Kervec. That's the one that's been jumping World Cups. See he's wearing that belly band on the horse, the big black band, and that's just to protect the horse from his spurs. That's a rattle. It's holding this together really well. You can see it's a real team effort though. The horse looks really muscly through its neck. There's quite a lot of power in the front end. Hey! Jumps the last, and he is inside. 80.77. Arturo Parada Vallejo, Cornet Dream, winner in Guadalajara, and now jumping clear here in the first round. Great combination. He joins Luis Alejandro Plasencia, also representing Mexico, and of course Jordan Coyle of Ireland as well. That's the three clears we have at this stage. Salvador Iñate, Salvador Iñate, Salvador Iñate.
plenty of talent still to come forwards. Just under 30 left to go here in the first round as we sit on the three clears at this stage. Manuel Alvarez and a horse called Enjoy joining us now. This is a 10-year-old gelding by quite a famous stallion called Yucato out of a Sam R mare. It's a horse that quite naturally covers the ground. got quite an economic jump. It doesn't really balloon over them. A little rattle. He's going to have to be careful as he comes down this line to that plank. If you rattle that one, it'll be on the ground. Jumped it nice. It's an athlete we've seen at World Cup finals in the past. down there with that oxer, quite a square oxer, so the front bar and the back bar are almost completely parallel. Travelled quite a lot with this horse last year, he took it to the Great Lakes Equestrian Festival in Michigan, just didn't quite make the back bar there. Also placed well in La Silla and San Miguel. Sits on the eight at the moment. Jumps the last. And well inside the time, 78.92. Total of eight there for Manuel Alvarez. So much within the time. He could have afforded just to take an extra check as he came round the corner towards that Oxer. But he will finish on eight here today. Moves him down into 13th place. Salvador Agnati next to go. Shakalanda. It's an interesting weekend for Salvador Agnati because actually this is his back garden. And you see that oxer right up at the far end and the trees, just behind those trees, is his house. And they used to hold horse shows on this property about 15 years ago. And then he decided that he wanted to hold horse shows and he's put in a tremendous amount of work. And the first horse show here was a World Cup event. So you can see you've got the hospitality there. Behind that, there's actually a second ring, a sand ring. The facilities here are just fabulous. And the amount of work they've done on the ground, the ground is, is perfect. The horses are really pinging off it. And he continued his interesting weekend because yesterday he came in, jumped clear in the first round of the World Cup, came back, jumped another clear, and was just slightly slower than Jordan Coyle and ended up second. So he's had a real good weekend. and. And all the athletes have been saying what a great venue he has put together. So I'm sure this will be on the calendar again next year, and I think he's looking to run a few other shows as well. This is a nine year old mare, again, another one by Chaco Blue. So it's out of a Cento mare. Just at that time allowed. I think he's going to be okay though as he jumps the Oxer. Oh, what a great weekend he's having. 80.57. Second in the World Cup yesterday with another horse. Now he's clear in round one with Shakalanda. Salvador Agnati on home turf here and representing Mexico. We're up to four clears now. Four clears. We've got Salvador Agnati. Arturo Parada Vallejo, Luis Alejandria Plasencia, all for Mexico, and then representing Ireland, the winner of the World Cup yesterday, Jordan Coyle. So that's the four clears that we have at the moment. Augustin Aguejo comes next, Las Palmas Z. Back with a second ride, we saw him a little bit earlier. Not the start he wanted. Just has the front rail off that first oxer. Yeah, if you do have that early rail, you've got the option to try and go a little bit faster, try and get home as one of the fastest four fault rounds, and who knows, that might be good enough to pick you up some prize money.
rattles that back bar. So it sits on eight at the moment. Is just fighting the contact a little bit. Seems to be that slight and straight. You see him just bending his neck when he uses the rein. Jumps the last nicely, just not their day. 12 for jumping, couple of time. Total of 14 there for Augustin. La Palma Z 87.51. Finishes on the 14. En la pista número 35, montando por México, de Gamatienzo con Quinta 2. Here's Greta now. Greta, Matianzo, and Quintador. A couple of nice ones at the moment. Another horse called Moon Girl jumping internationally, and HHS 40 Roses as well. Quintador really starting to prove itself in this sort of level of competition. We saw Nicola Heinrus of Denmark jump this last year. Nicola doing a lot of training over here. Greta quite a regular on the Mexican circuit, jumping at New Mexico City events at Balvanera, San Miguel. I actually was very unlucky with this horse in Guadalajara. I just had the odd reel here and there. See just how careful he came down and then still caught that plank. See her really using her upper body here just to try and back the horse off a little bit. Did a good job of the combination. Stride into the officer and again as soon as they landed, she could feel it landed a bit long, so she sat back, took a check. I think if you wanted to pick one thing to work on with this horse, it really would be the rhythm. You'd want it to keep that nice forward rhythm, but not landing on the forehand and just keeping them that same tempo all the way around. It's here having to work just to lengthen and shorten at times. She finishes on nine today, 84.56. Four clears at this stage. 27 combinations left to come forward. Patricio Pascal joins us once again. We saw Patricio a little bit earlier with another one of his horses and now comes back with the nine-year-old stallion. This is a Hanoverian called Dublin. World Cup horses. This is a new one on his string this year. He's a nine year old. He brought it out for the first time in Guadalajara in about the third week in January. So this is only a horse's third show. He's got a ton of skill. You see the horse wiggling down that line and Patricio working hard to keep him nice and straight. and straight is what we all work for. Whoa! See, they just couldn't find the stride in there. a result there. Could have popped a circle in but he thought he had enough room around that corner just to get the horse back where he needed to be and then just caught the front bar. Oh, 
again, it looks like the horse just didn't lock on, almost the same as it happened at the double, and that last one could have actually been a result of what happened at the double. I don't know if the horse just got a little bit of a fright. But Patricio, you know, he's a great horseman. And such a lot to like about that horse. I think it's just their third show ever jumping internationally. And they jump around so nicely, you know, some of the more technical lines, like the big gymnastic triple combination, the ox are on this sort of six strides coming down towards the delicate plank, jumped all that nicely, and in the end it was you know, a two-stride double, and then an ox are coming up into the shade there that, that kind of caught them out. So certainly plenty to like there for Patricio. Uh, Marcelo de los Santos returns with another one of his uh, strength. He can jump up to three horses in this competition today. So this is his second, Uriel de la Sense, the 11 year old by Kashmir van Schotterhoff. Combination that are representing Mexico here. Nation certainly well represented. Sitting on four clears, three for Mexico, one for Ireland. He's going to have to be careful down here. Yeah, you can see he really sorted things out down that distance. Jean Angot had this horse for a while, French rider. Marcelo took over the ride about March of 2017, so he's been jumping this one for a couple of years now. <laughs> Big opportunities to jump here in Mexico, actually, because they've gone up to you know, over 20 international events in Mexico alone. It seems to keep on growing. You know, they've now got two World Cup qualifiers. One here that we saw yesterday, and another one happened in Guadalajara a couple of weeks back. Falls today. It's going to be four jumping, two time total of six, 88, 86. Marcelo de los Santos, Uriel de los Santos finishes on six here in round number one. Gordon Razor says, Is that true in every competition that they can only ride three horses? It always stipulates on the competition. So in this one, they can ride three. In the World Cup yesterday, they can only ride one horse. That always stipulates in the prize list. And anyone can see the schedule of the prize list uh, by going to FEI calendar, finding the show, and you can see the schedule, and it tells you the prize money, the entry fee, the stabling fee, and that's available to anyone. But the rules of this particular competition stipulate that they can ride up to three horses. And you've got time when there's 60 in the class to get organized and be on and off. It's a bit more difficult if there was only 20 in the class. Carlos Rodolfo Molina Gordillo is next, Tribon de Lana Tria. Quite a few de Lana Tria horses around at the moment. Very frustrating to have that early rail for them, but again, if they want to try and be a fast four fault round, that option is available to them. Currently the highest placed four fault round sits in seventh. That's Jaime Ascaraga. He sits on four and 78.68. So if they want to try that tactic, they're going to have to keep thinking forward all the way around there. going to kick himself if he can jump round and answer all the, the tough tests out there and just have that lucky rail right at the beginning. Time allowed might come to play here and it does. It's four jumping and one time fault. Total of five today, 82-36. 
you can see the frustration on his face there because he knows, you know, he jumped the triple, he jumped the, the bending lines, he jumped the oxer down to the flank. A 17-year-old stallion called Magno stepping forward next. This horse is actually owned by the Secretary of Defense for Mexico. Jose Enrique Suarez takes the ride. He jumped this in the World Cup and it really wasn't their day yesterday. Had quite a few rails down, so I think he might have just drop down a level today just to try and make sure the horse finishes on a good note. Careful down here. You can see he was just a touch behind the horse's movement. It's just starting to settle down a little bit. communication issues as he came around the corner and 18 18 today was the Enrique Suarez and the Magno 85-1-0 four clears at this stage Salvador Agnate, Arturo Parada Vallejo Luis Alejandro Plasencia and Jordan Coyle so that's the four clears that we have at the moment Really nice one still to see in the first round. Of course, jump off to come as well. Gerardo Pasquale next. Galvano van de Blaspo. world here. It's a great job so far. Hello, first part in. You can see how well he recovers through the second and third elements. This is a horse that was produced uh, in Italy. Bisquale brought it over to Mexico halfway through last year. Maybe about their seventh competition together. Oh. He used his arms and elbows. He could feel about three strides out. He just didn't have what was required. And horse really fighting him in the hand there. I think he might just be going to call it a day today. Looks like he decides to retire then. Right up a squall there with Galvano van de Vlasput. Back to one of the younger riders in the field now, Ruben Dario Ramirez. Derasma Vidial. 11 year old buying Doltro, so KWPN horse. Just having a look around, reminding himself of the course because, I mean, for these ones, you know, they walked it about an hour ago, at least an hour ago. It's 21 years of age. Got another couple of 
horses at the moment, H. Goria, I. Senna, Diamond, GR. This is their first time out internationally this year. We saw them together jump in San Miguel last spring and then I've seen them with us since then. check down that line. <laughs> yes, he's made it. 80.05, Ruben Damiro Ramirez, the Risma VDL featuring in that jump off against the clock. Some quick horses already through from Salvador Agnati, Arturo Parada Vallejo, Luis Alejandria Plasencia, and Jordan Coyle as well. 20 left to go here in the first round. Don't forget you can get involved with the conversation as well, whether you're watching on YouTube Live or on Facebook. Let me know what you're watching. If you've got any questions or anything else, stick it in the comments box so you can get involved here as we continue on through the first round. Hector Caro is next, a horse called Craig, which is a great name for a horse. 14-year-old uh, stallion by Canturo, out of a contender mare. Here's Hector Creo. Some nice top three finishes in Guadalajara. Top six in the Grand Prix of Mexico City. That was the two star last year. Again, six stride distance down there. Slightly short. It's definitely been the fence that's caught the most, hasn't it? says how many left to go. We've got about 20 left here in the first round. Hector just sitting on eight at the moment. I mean, you do have those couple of rails and if your horse needs it you can start to think about you know next week and the next competition and use it to make sure the horse finishes on a really good note and I think that's what he did you know when you saw just how well he jumped down that final line finishes on a total of nine eight jumping in one time exceeding that time allowed of 81 seconds finishes in 81 56. Karim Perez Nunez next with Comtesa representing the home nation of Mexico just 18 years of age this is a horse that she took to the North American Youth Championships last year we saw her at Old Salem Farm she missed out on medals finishing sixth in the team and tenth individually with this little horse and it's a regular at, at those events, actually. We've seen her for the last three years at the Young Riders. It's interesting that she had the front bar off the Oxer, but then really managed to work nice down the distance there and come out over the plank. Well, just wasn't straight as she came around the corner. She could have just went out a stride more and give herself a little bit of room. A few nice horses now. North American Youth Championships are held at Old Salem Farm at the moment. That's an event that does tend to move around. I think they've got it for another couple of years, though. 
And that's a great stepping stone for these young miners. You know, it's a real international feel. Whoa, covered, didn't she? Really well. See what they make of this final line. Yeah, good job. Uh, right, today 13 for Kareem, Kareem Perez Nunez there, Contessa, 82-1-1, and just 18 years of age, only about their second or third show of the year, but today just not for them, 13 in total. Ricardo Retag next with Clapton, representing Mexico. You can see just how well Mexico's represented here in this first round. A few nations have been competing here though over the last few days. If you're not watching earlier, this is a, a brand new event here in Lyon. Now hosting a World Cup. It's the, the first time ever that we've been to this property. And I think, you know, as these shows just continue to grow and grow, we're going to see more and more people come from, from North America and even further afield as well. First show out of 2019. Finished last year with some good results in Lucia and San Miguel. Lisa Carmen says, beautiful facility, what a course. It is a beautiful facility. And again, for those that weren't watching earlier, this is owned by Salvador Onyati, one of the athletes that's actually already clear in the first round. He'll be back for the jump ball second in the World Cup yesterday. He travels around a lot. You know, he goes to Spruce Meadows and stuff and he's done a lot of shows over the years. And I think he's taken all the best bits he could and encapsulated them into this venue that's right at his house. His house is just behind those trees that you can see there. Everyone's been saying just how good this footing is. He's done a lot of work here. And Belarba also on Facebook saying, could us tell anyone who goes over that leaping plank. <laughs> it's a difficult line down there and unless you get a nice stride into the oxer it's very difficult down the short six stride distance to, to gather things up again. Uh, right, score for Ricardo is going to be 9 today, 8 jumping 1 time, total of 9 and 81.58 with Clapton. Tenemos en la pista el número 45 de México, Santiago Atías de Mota, Chiquitita. Santiago Atias is next with Chocuita from Mexico. Regular here in Mexico. Doesn't really travel too much though. Just shows outside of, uh, of this country. you find with all the Mexican riders that are starting to compete on teams and we're looking ahead to the Pan Ams World Cup final perhaps they do tend to travel quite a lot and I think that's important to go and see you know shows in, in different continents gives you a chance to compare as well here in Mexico Santiago and this horse are finishing you know second and top three placings and Lucia. This is the oxer. And again, that's the domino effect of having that oxer. If you come in a little bit long of the front rail there, it looks like that there's a bit of space in there where you can sort things out. But honestly, when you're coming down that line with that fence six strides away, it's very difficult to, to, to sort out the stride. Like it's just running through his hand a little bit. And already on some faults so there's no point trying just to push for that stride and quite sensibly he thought right I'm going to pop a circle in here I'm going to get rebalanced going to get a nice rhythm and let's start again <laughs> ah, but then has that back rail down I don't know if you might just call it a day now yeah I thought you might you know after popping that circle and rebalancing and then having another rail it's just sometimes you just need to need to retire 
Again, first time we've seen them out this year, so they've had a little bit of time off over the festive period. So he now knows what he needs to go back and work on. And that's interesting because he had a cloth over the horse's face as it came in. Some horses aren't that keen to come in the ring and then as soon as they come in they really settle down. So rather than argue too much, um, they, they put a cloth over his face as he came in and now he's in the ring absolutely relaxed and ready to get underway. Although it looks a little bit strange, that's much better than trying to, to argue with the horse and then you know, potentially having an accident or something. And Carlos Alvarez, and this is a horse called Premier. Sixteen-year-old mare by Cascavello. Carlos was in here earlier with another horse in the back of the second one. down there nicely, didn't he? Jump in this one for about eight or nine years now. So he certainly knows the horse inside out. fault round we've seen on 78.68 so let's keep an eye and see if he's going to pick up a, a minor place today uh, 78.08 so he is going to actually be the fastest of the four fault ranks so he takes him into 8th place 8th at the moment 15 left to come forwards Margaret Wakefield says this is a hard course, you have to ride it perfectly. You're, you're not wrong there, Margaret. It is. There's lots of tests out there today. Um, and although we saw the Grand Prix with the World Cup yesterday, you know, for the, the sort of top level, for those that have been jumping in the 145 competitions here, this is kind of like their Grand Prix. It's the final day of competition. So you'd always expect this to be that little bit tougher than perhaps they were jumping back on day one. Valquia is with us now, Cascada. Nine-year-old by Casal. He got away with that plank, but coming into the Oxar, you can see just swerved. Takes that down. to do here. Is he going to pop in a circle? Is he going to retire or is he just going to keep going? If he might have just hurt himself on the front of the saddle there. Let's see what he decides to do. Nope. He's going to take a deep breath. It looks like he's going to keep going. Or potentially not. Yeah, he retires. I think he almost thought about it there and thought, you know what, don't think so. So he retires. But you can see the horse is nice and relaxed there, just stretching down into the contact. I think he may have just hurt himself a little bit on the saddle there. I think he was quite right not to 
not to keep going. The last thing you want to do is then have another accident because you can't really feel well and down one leg or whatever. Um, right, let's get Francisco Lamellan on track. Donagraf. from whatever bit that he's got in this horse. Just comes down that line a bit long. Got a ride for this short six down there. as well. Yeah. Decides to retire. So about 14 combinations left to see here in round number one. We've got five clears at the moment. Jordan Coyle, Luis Alejandro Plasencia, Arturo Parada Vallejo, Salvador Oñate, and Ruben Daro Ramirez. That's the clears we have. That's four for Mexico and one for Ireland. And this man is already clear with one horse now back with another. Arturo Parada Vallejo, this time Cassidy Z. Eight year old by Casito. running a little bit long so let's watch down this line working 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 hard and made it good SP Studios is watching on YouTube and says they like the look of this horse it's got a lot of power right through that front end. Shame to have that early rail because since then, oh, really long down here. Comes down on the seven and finishes on four. 78.57 for there for Arturo Parada Vallejo. Again, fast four fault rounds could pick up a piece of the action today. He heads down into nine, so second fastest of the four faults that we've seen so far. Every Wheeler says that horse's back end is insane. There's so much power, isn't it? You can see it really pushing up off the ground. A lot of the horses have been jumping well off this grass surface. I know I said it earlier, but the amount of work they've put into this surface, it's not just a grass field that they've cut. You know, a lot of work goes into preparing these surfaces and, and making sure they're as best as they possibly can be. They've got a lot of water on this last night. They've been rolling and you know, horses are jumping better off this than they would off an artificial surface, I would say. Rigoberto, Aldana, now with us and on track. Waiting for Guatemala. Sarsi's jumping last year, he had Samurai, he had Capo. This is a 
brand new one on his string called Golden Diamonds WG. First time we've seen this combination jumping together. It's got plenty of scope though. It just hangs in the air slightly at times. skinny fence that one not many have had it down though actually have they uh for jumping couple of time faults as well you can see you know literally hung in the air a little bit and just a touch steady that's added up to two time faults 85 25 there but you know first international competition as a partnership a lot to like there for rigoberto just 10 or 11 combinations left to go here in the first round francisco mendoza with reward sign Coming next, 14-year-old Gelding. Dogs was watching on YouTube Live and says red stirrups, talking about the last horse. He gets stirrups in all colours now. And all types of materials as well. Of course, they used to just be made of metal, but now you can get lots of composite and lots of plastic stirrups. There. Let's see how he sets up for this line. Whoa, wait. Yeah, super job. Ah, and then has that rail down on the rollback. here and there in San Miguel, Mexico City, La Silla. Combination that have been together a couple of years and I first brought this out as Bruce Meadows back in 2016. for jumping. Couple of time faults added in there as well for Francisco Mendoza, 85-97. Salvador Agnati. We've already seen him jump one horse. He's clear with that one and now back with a horse called Beautiful Red. There's a brand new one on his string, but one that's been going very nicely so far. Picked up a place with this here earlier in the week. And another reminder as well, if you weren't watching earlier, that this is actually his facility. He, he lives here. He's been using it as his own private training facility and then decided that he was going to put on an equestrian event. And he really has pulled out all the stops and done a ton of work. You can see just how well the horses are jumping off this surface and there's another sand ring uh, just behind the hospitality tent there that you can see. There's plenty of horses on the property at the moment. I'm sure he's going to be running more events in the future as well and of course this is now home of, to the second World Cup qualifier in Mexico. And he did just touch that plank. And he just moved it to the edge of the cuff and it's interesting because under international jumping rules if that was to fall any time before he crosses the finish line it would still be faultable and it's delicate and there's a bit of a breeze so hopefully it'll just hang on in there on those cups the ring crew are always instructed actually if that does happen they're not allowed to touch it until the horse crosses the finish line because the last thing you need is the ring crew to go and fix it oh he's had that one down now sadly but this is a, a really nice new horse on his string and you know Salvador's been building his string and building and building and Big Red now that he jumped in the World Cup and finished second yesterday is on absolute fire at the minute. And what a nice round for this horse as well. 78-42 just finishes with one down, total of four here for Salvador.
Well inside that time allowed, maybe he just could have put in that extra stride round towards the Oxer, who knows. There's still a lot to like there, can't be too disappointed, and he heads into ninth place, but already clear with one horse, and he'll be back with that one a little bit later on. Not many left to go here in the first round. Jump off to come a little bit later as well. And at the moment, sitting on the five clears, Jordan Coyle, Luis Alejandro Placencia, Arturo Parada Vallejo, Salvador Agnati with the first horse, and Ruben no, Dairo Ramirez. This combination just making their final preparations. And we're on to Carlos Rodolfo Molina. Usador de Perhet represents Mexico. Rush to that final 10 here in the first round. about 16 or 17 years of age, probably the youngest athlete that we're going to see here. It's another one that we saw form part of the team that missed out on medals but finished six at the Young Rider Youth Championships as it's now called, held at Old Salem Farm last, uh, last summer. That's the horse called Tribon de Vanatria. They're starting to, to add a couple His string and jump nicely down that line and rode to victory actually with this horse in Guadalajara a few weeks ago. It's a spectacular double clear. That was in the meter 35 competition. So the fences we see out there today, meter 45 in height, at one meter 60 in width. You can see he's answering those questions really well. I mean, so gymnastic down that triple combination. just to make sure it had come down. Jumps the final line. Well, for being 16 or 17 years of age, did a great job out there today. Finishes on four, 80.37. Heads down into 14th place. That would be in some money at the moment, depending on how things progress here. Sure, we'll see him back at the youth championships as well later on this year. It's returning to Old Salem Farm in I guess August this year. Marcelo Gallen is next in Terra OH, represents Mexico. Still just on the five clears at this stage here in round number one. another really nice horse at the moment called Kingsland but this is the horse he finished well on in Guadalajara a couple of weeks ago finished second there had some great experience with this horse last summer taking it to Spruce Meadows and for those that have watched Spruce Meadows you'll know it's big open grass fields there so the horse certainly performs well under those conditions body around that roll back turn there. down the distance. Again, keeping the eye on the 
good time. I think he's going to be all right, though. Let's have a look. Yeah, absolutely fine. 79.53, Marcelo Gallen in Tero OH. He will be really happy with that. Earning his place in the jump off, bringing us up to six clears here. Six clear in the first round. Seven or eight left to go. And then we're off to that jump off against the clock. Jose Antonio Valarta. Next, Josefina Z. 11 year old mayor. And you can see just having a little look around, reminding himself of the course because you know, these riders probably walked the course about two hours ago now. Sometimes they get to watch one or two as they're standing at the gate, but quite often you'll see the riders just having a look and making sure they know exactly where they're going. This is a horse that Jose's had for a couple of years. Uh, Philip Lever used to ride this. He was an Australian rider. And Mike Van Ols from Belgium started it in the young horse competitions about three and a half, four years ago now. just on four faults. Time is going to be a factor. He took one out down that final line, just thinking about the time allowed, but still over there. 82, 81, so four jumping, one time. Total of five there. And sadly, out of the lineup today for Jose Antonio Velarta and Josefina Zed. Not many left then, down to about a handful in the first round. Jose Antonio Chandraui is next. Amara de Bergerie represents Mexico. Foxy Gatcha is watching on YouTube Live and saying, do I ever read the chat? I'm reading everything, Foxy. It's great to have you with us. Maybe you can get involved if you want to ask any questions or make any comments about what you're seeing today, feel free to get involved in the chat pane, either on YouTube Live or on Facebook Live. It's great to have that interactivity. You made a good job of that line, because that has caught quite a few in round one. one in a row to catch that. I don't know if he just came in a bit longer, perhaps it's quite shaded up there. The way horses see things is completely different to the way we see things, so perhaps that just caught him out going from the shade into the light and vice versa. And he sits on eight. the last so well, let's have a look it's over the time it's 81.37 so eight jumping one time fault total of nine there for Jose Antonio Chadrawi and Mano de Bergerie Eduardo 
people asking on Facebook and YouTube how many left to go. There's about five or six left to go, but if you do want to follow things, just search for Longines Timing, click on Equestrian, then have a look and you'll see Leon and you can find the start list, the live results or things that's happening, um, and also the course plan as well. So you can have a look at the course plan and you can see what the jump off's going to be and, uh, and all that stuff, all that great stuff, it's all available to you at Longines Timing. Uh, right, this is Eduardo Sanchez Navarro and Keras. This is a real top horse now. One that's been on the circuit for a long time, jumped at you know real top level. Eduardo's wild horse at the moment. He's got another one called Sicanta that we've seen jump World Cups. This is when he's had some top six finishes with it, Spruce Meadows last summer. Patricio Pascal, of course, used to ride this horse up until about a year and a half, two years ago, and he did some amazing things with it. Had numerous wins, lots of great placings. So this is an exciting horse for Eduardo. Ah, I see him shaking his head as soon as he landed there. was asking on YouTube live is this to jump off has it happened yet no it's not we've got a few more to go in the first round and we'll have that jump off against the clock but it looks like Eduardo knowing he's not going to be there decides to call it a day you know we said at the beginning you know what experience that horse has got just coming down on that back bar today really unlike that horse so he knows he's out of contention decides to retire Jose Maria Quintana and Katoki Boy next. Again, another one of the young athletes in the field today. Sixteen or seventeen years of age. This is the horse he did take to the youth championships. Individually finished twelfth, part of the team that finished sixth. Ackerman used to jump this one. German rider. She produced it up in the seven year old classes into the eight year old classes, and then Jose Maria Quintana took over the ride. Their first win together last year, or two wins last year actually. I think the future of Mexico show jumping is just so, so strong. When you look at the horsepower, the young riders, the experienced athletes that are already out there performing. That is a good sense on YouTube Live for how many horses are in the jump off. At the moment we have six. Six clears at the moment. Uh, five for Mexico and then Jordan Coyle for Ireland who won the World Cup here yesterday. Had another one actually earlier in the week. Whoa, sit up. Covered there. Just got right down to the base, didn't he? Well, such a lot to like about that little horse and about that rider as well. You know, such a young age, 16 or 17, and then coming in and putting in that great performance. One little mistake there, being quite costly for jumping in one time, total of five. 8388. Yitas uh, on YouTube Live again says, well, that was an awkward jump, still got over. Yeah, and then recovered so well. That was the impressive thing. You know, some riders would have put in a circle or whatever to rebalance, but he just gathered up his reins and got on with the job. It's great to see. Alejandro Leonardo Winkler next. He muse Yek, 15 year old gelding. Uh, by quite a famous stallion, the stallion for pleasure, out of a Cathargo mare. And for those that do follow horse breeding, you'll know that they are very good lines. Oh. Second fence. And that's at that angle. 
but you don't want to go right out and use all the room in the corner because you've got to keep an eye on the time allowed right from the start here. It's definitely part of the test. Sorry, it out down there a little bit into that delicate plank. He's got a couple out at the moment. He's got another horse called Excellent. Some good placings with that one in Guadalajara. This is a new one for him, brand new for this year. Simon Naziri of Israel used to ride this one and competed not only here in Mexico with it, but over in Europe as well. Been new for 2019 for Alejandro. I think this will be about their sixth class together. And I think once they get to know each other a little bit better, they're going to be jumping some superb rounds. Yes, yeah, 17 today. Alejandro Leonardo Winkler, he muse Yek, maybe 2.99. Still gives him a little pat as he heads out. And I think he knows as well, you know, they are still getting to know each other. And there's no way at home to, to get the experience you can get when you're in the ring. Javier Fernandez and Wesley comes next. First to the final three here in the first round. And this is a 13 year old mare by Corrado. There's a couple of horses jumping here already today. Of course, all these athletes have got a great support team backstage. You know, if you have got two or three, you'll have some help there. You'll have your groom getting the next one ready. When you start to jump at this level and above, it really is a team effort. It's very difficult to do it on your own if you've got more than one horse. This is a rider who's based at Guadalajara Country Club. You may have seen the sport from there two weeks ago. It's another nice facility here in Mexico and another one that hosts World Cups. His World Cup horse at the moment, Send Good All Good. He jumped that year yesterday. This is quite an interesting one because an Argentinian rider brought him out this horse in 2015, jumped it a few times, then it went to Javier. And he jumped it a few times, then Patricio Miguel Madero had it, and Javier Fernandez brought it back out for the first time towards the end of the last year. So now I think starting to really campaign it a little bit more this year. I think he's got some big plans. Obviously just having that oxer down means he's on four at the moment, and a few have had that Liverpool here in round one. And finishes on four, 77.52. So that is going to be the fastest of the four fault rounds we've seen. So that means he's going to head into ninth place at the moment. So he's going to end up in the prize money today, having that rail down and finishing with a fast time. So it's got to be a little bit of a consolation as he heads back out the archway. Second last to go, we're off to Gerardo Pascal again. Epicor this time, the 10 year old stallion by Lupicor. Lupicor producing lots of chestnut horses. As we were just discussing there about needing that support team, and I think that's really true for Gerardo. This is his third horse in this competition. And it's not just getting the horses ready, of course, it's having to, to cool them off as well and make sure they came out just like any athlete would do, that they only really get a, a rinse off because it's really warm out there. And there's some great wash boxes and stuff here with heat lamps, not that they probably ever need it here, but the facilities are wonderful. Well, Harado's produced this horse for quite a few years. Steve Gerdat tried it out, actually, at last year. Steve rode it. Olympia, rode it in the accumulator there, a couple of other competitions. Steve Gerdat also took it to Kanoka and Falsterbro. Harado's brought it back out this year. I think that line's, you know, one that the riders will be talking about backstage, that oxer down to the plank. I thought the rollback turn might have caught another couple, but you know, the riders have been riding that one quite well. Sinead 
Sinead's asking on Facebook Live, do the four falters jump again or only those clear? It's only the clear round, Sinead. So it's anyone tied for first place. So as soon as you have two clears, that means they're tied for first place. Sometimes, though, you don't have any clears. And that's when the four falters would jump off because they'd be tied for first place. So it's all the clears that'll be jumping off. And then the rest of the lower placings will be decided on faults and time. So the fastest four fault round will take at the moment seventh place, then eighth and ninth and tenth and all, all the way down the line. Uh, four jumping one time, total of five there for Gerardo Pascal, just taking that early Oxer on course, finishing on 83.44. Para Gerardo Pasquel y el licor de Carinda. Tenemos en la pista al último binomio de este. Last to go then, in round number one, is going to take us to Lorenza O'Farrell. A few of you will know her for jumping Queen's Darling in the World Cup circuit. But this is a different one. It's the 11 year old mare by Calvaro out of a Calander mare. It's called Calvira. They represent Mexico. They're last to go here in round number one. Lorenza brought this horse out three years ago, jumping meter 35 competitions. And I have to say, here in Mexico, you notice more than ever that riders seem to bring the young horses out, produce them up the grades, and then keep them, where over in Europe it's a bit more of a business where you buy the young ones, you bring them up, and then sell them on and start all over again. It's a little bit different here. The riders tend to keep the horses, produce them, and, and hold on to them. Friends is a very, very tidy, quiet rider. Her and her World Cup horse, Queen's Darling, really have been knocking on the door. And I think, you know, as we look ahead towards the next World Cup season, they're really going to be a contender. to get her through as well. Time's going to be fine. Jumps the last. And yes, yeah, she's through. 78.46, Lorenzo Farrell and Calvira. So that means we're going to be taking a total of seven through. Seven to jump off against the clock. Shalik says, wow, on uh, YouTube. Sassia, such a nice mare. Cassandra, absolutely love a good mare. Lots of people joining in, which is great to see as well. And don't forget to keep sharing on Facebook and YouTube because now we are getting set for an exciting jump off against the clock. Starting a total of 58 in the first round, it was a 12% success rate, meaning seven come back. And you can see on screen those runners and riders for the jump off. Jordan Coyle, Ball Prince, representing Uno, Ireland. The quince, rest of the field for the home nation. Luis Alejandro Plasencia, Arturo Parada Vallejo, Salvador Oñati, Ruben Dara Ramirez, Marcelo Gallen, and Lorenza O'Farrell. Then we can see the lower placings. They're based on faults and time from the first round. So the two on a single time fault, and then we look to the four fault rounds to fill the rest of the placings. So a real exciting jump off to look forward to and a real interesting first round. Our course designer here has done a tremendous job, Anderson Lima. He built his first World Cup yesterday, did that with pure style. And now he's provided a great test with some really interesting lines like the Oxer down to the plank, the Oxer up at the corner that caused a few issues. And of course, that gymnastic triple combination coming right across the centre of the field. But him and his team are getting us ready for the jump off against the clock. For those that aren't too familiar with the format, they come back over a shortened course. Sometimes those jumps go up a little bit as well. It's a shorter course, less fences, 
and it's a bit more twisty as well. Normally the course designers try to give them a few different turns and a few different options. So if they've got a horse that can turn well and that you can place a little bit closer to the fence and still get over it, then you've got those options there to try and make up as much time as you possibly a, can. Now yeah, we'll have a look at the jump off course when we get that first one on track in just a couple of minutes time, but it's going to be an exciting one. So make sure you do stay with us. Keep hitting share as well as we get ready for that jump off. Seven combinations coming back. It is going to be pretty fast do not go anywhere quick break and then we're back with the jump off here of the bamba heel classic on the final day of jumping here in leon El décimo primero para Juan Carlos Álvarez del Castillo y Premier 29-4 en 78-08. Y el décimo segundo para Salvador Oñate y Beautiful Red 4 en 78-42. Tenemos... Ocho minutos, nueve minutos para la señal, jinetes. Les vamos a pedir a los del desempate estén listos. Jordan Coyle, Luis Alejandro Plasencia, Arturo Parada, Salvador Oñate. Estamos en directo en Live TV, Live Streaming. Ocho minutos para que tengamos que dar inicio a este desempate. Well, if you have just joined us on Facebook or YouTube or you've been with us throughout the competition, then do stay with us. We've been told about another five minutes and then we'll see the first horse coming forward for that jump off against the clock. We can see Anderson Lima right in the centre of the screen. Him and his team getting us ready, just putting those fences up or down or making the adjustments that he needs to. And then we're back in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Jump off on the way.
Mario. Well, we can see final preparations underway for the jump off against the clock, but here's the runners and riders coming through. Jordan Coyle getting us underway. Oh, Luis Alejandro oh. Plasencia, Arturo Parada Vallejo, Salvador Agnati, Ruben Darío Ramirez, Marcelo Gallen, and then Lorenza O'Farrell will be our last to go. So the athletes do come back in the same order as they jump clear in the first round. The order of starting in round one's drawn, so they retain that random draw as they return for the jump off against the clock. So in this round, they're looking to be that little bit faster, try and leave the fences up. And of course, it will be the fastest one with the lowest number of faults, normally the fastest clear, that will end up taking the win here. It's going to be quick, though. You know, you've got Lorenzo Farrell coming towards the end, Salvador Agnati right in the middle of the pack. And he's always quick against the clock. That beautiful red horse he's got you know, really is fast. Plenty of talent to see here in this jump off against the clock. You can see the ring crew there just making their preparation. But who do you think is going to do it? We've got one for Ireland and then six for Mexico. Luis Alejandro Plasencia, Arturo Parado Vallejo. They're both fast. Marcelo Gallens in there, Lorenzo Farrell. And this man's certainly going to put a lot of pressure on today. Winner of yesterday's World Cup already having a win in this division with this horse a little bit earlier in the week as well. It's going to be Jordan Coyle and Bold Prince that gets us underway representing Ireland. So we'll take a look at the course as we get the first one on track. But we're going to be starting in exactly the same place. So same start line here in the jump off over that aeroplane the oxer at fence one which is still slightly ascending so still quite a nice fence to get them underway jordan though is always in it to win it so we start over the oxer at one then we come towards a new fence it's been numbered as fence number 15 that's that blue upright so that's 15, then it's down to 7BC, final two parts of the combination, upright, one stride down over the Oxer. Then they come around the top corner, tight as you like, second part of the double, that's 9B, that was pretty tight and pretty tidy. Three efforts left from here, they come down over fence number 10, that's the Liverpool. Then it's round to another new fence, fence number 16 on course, crossing the upright. And then it's down over fence three to finish, which is this red and white right in front of hospitality. And there we go, 37-04. He was quick, he was tight and tidy, and that'll give them something to chase now. Jordan Coyle and Bold Prince representing Ireland, setting a good standard there. They're gonna have to be quick. They're gonna have to take the turn. So you saw just how quickly and tight he turned round towards 9B, the upright. Second part of the double from the first round. But let's see, we've got some quick ones to come. Luis Alejandro Plasencia is next with Jack White. He's won on this horse within the last few months. But a win in Guadalajara actually just a couple of weeks ago. He'll certainly give it a try. Yitis is saying on YouTube live, I think George is definitely going to win. He always goes for the win. Uh, Foxy agrees, nice round. Anderson Mendez says good. Pansalo impressive. Great to have so many people watching. Luis Alejandro already by neck and neck at this very early stage. Gonna have to really push up around this corner. Let's see how tight he can turn back here. A little bit wider. Jordan was about 25 as he landed over this next fence. So not too far away, but then catches the front rail. Now sits on the four faults. Jordan's added the pressure on, so that's dared them to, you know, ride in that nice forward movement. Also to take those tight turns as well. So it's going to be four jumping, 37.50. Just about half a second slower than Jordan, but then taking that rail as well. Shaping up to be a good one. Five combinations left to see here in this jump off against the clock. And here comes our next one, Arturo Parada Vallejo and Cornet Stream. 37.04 is the time to beat. About 25 seconds as they land over the Liverpool Oxer at fence number 10. And I think, you know, the win could really come from just how tight they can turn round towards that upright at 9B. You know,
though they've got to be quick, they'll all be quick across the ground, but I think Jordan really made up some time just how quick he managed to turn in there. It's also quite a big stride, really covers the ground. Just catches that rail, gets a little bit deep in here. See the back bar coming off the oxer, that was a result of the stride he had coming in towards that double. Quite tight through here. time was 37.04 so we can still compare that time as he comes down and this is quite a bit steadier and takes the last as well. Pressure was on, had to pull out all the stops but in the end finishes on 12, 40.99, 12 faults for Arturo, Parada Vallejo and Cornet Stream. But they're all guaranteed some prize money, they're all guaranteed a good place our top seven. So it really is all or nothing. This is Salvador Onyati coming forward next. He's got three nice ones, I think, competing here. Big red, beautiful red, and this one as well. Shakalanda, Salvador Onyati. Now, if you were watching earlier, you'll have heard me mention that Salvador actually owns his property. Him and his team have done a tremendous job of putting it together for this first event that they've held here. as well on YouTube Live. She's a great athlete. We've seen her compete here before. Oxy watching on YouTube says this is her favourite horse so far. This is going to be a great one for the future for Salvador. He really is looking towards the future, looking to ride to medals at Pan Am, looking to beat Tokyo in the Olympics. Last fence comes down for him. Salvador Agnati finishing on eight falls today, 43-7-0. New one on his strength, just not their day. Jordan Cole's already had some success here. A win in this division, winner of the Longines FEI Jumping World Cup yesterday. Could he make it a hat trick and take a third win here? He's got a bit of competition still to come. Ruben Demiro Ramirez, Turisma Vidal first of those final three in our jump off. so he will be celebrating the next few days without a doubt but this rider came very close uh, 38 29 just taking that one rail down today finishes on four Ruben Demiro Ramirez for Mexico Jarisma Vidal Two combinations left to come forward. That's Jordan done enough, 37-04. And it's interesting because the rest that we've seen have already had faults. And that could be just due to the pressure that Jordan's put on them to pull out all the stops. Second last, Marcelo Gallen, Entero, OH. come down. It almost got away with that, I think. It kind of rolled around, but it has fallen. Fastest for fault round we've seen, 37.50, and that would be good enough for second today. Luis Alejandro Placencia in second at the moment. So, riding for 
second. It's got to be 37.50. Uh, 41 21, not quite quick enough. We'll take him down into fourth place. Uh, Yetis is asking on YouTube Live what the prize fund is. It's 510,000 pesos, Mexican pesos. You'll have to use a, a currency converter to work that out, depending on where you are in the world. But it's about 510,000 pesos total prize fund. Normally, about 33% of that will go to the winner. Will the lion's share go to Jordan Coyle, though, or will it go to Lorenza O'Farrell? She's last to go in this one. Calvira is the name of the horse. And she is just about to get underway. Let's find out how this unfolds. Will it be Ireland or will it be Mexico? steadier than Jordan. Where all she's got to do is go clear, even have a time fall, and she'll be guaranteed second. And this is a horse she's been producing up the grades. Oh, tries to go quite tight in here. Got some time to make up though. Oh, Jordan's got it, I think. People are whistling. People are saying, come on. Jordan Coyle will take the win today for Ireland, but she can just leave this up. She's guaranteed second. And that's exactly what she's going to do today. 42-2-0, second place. And I know Lorenzo Farrell will be very happy with that. Calvira takes second here in the Ban Bahio Classic on the final day of jumping here in Lyon. So many congratulations to all our athletes. But it is for the third time this week, Jordan Coyle takes that victory, winner of the World Cup yesterday, and now taking the lion's share here in the Ban Bahio Classic. Lorenzo Farrell finishes in second, and Luis Alejandro taking third place. There is your full result on the screen and our presentation is on the way in just a couple of minutes time we're going to hand you over though to our ring announcer here because i am off to a show in hong kong now and uh, we're going to be starting there tomorrow so i've got to dash and catch a flight but thank you to everybody who's been getting involved on youtube and on facebook it's been great here in leon some fabulous sport great jumping great weekend for jordan and i hope we see you back here again very very soon Noveno para Paola, Milivia y Julieta, y décimo Javier Fernández y Wesley 55.